And my freshman year, uh, I was telling you about my dad. He kind of walks this weird way, if you ever see him. Uh, he had the hip right here. He tore the cartilage in it, and he messed it up really badly, so he had to get a titanium replacement. So he kind of has a limp in his step. But everything was going good until freshman year. Then my dad had to talk to me that he was retiring at 53 at the time, which is obviously you're not supposed to retire until 65. But we talked through it, and he couldn't do his job right because of this thing. When he was walking, he, you know, he would get tired, and he can't, and he dislocated it so many times. Leads me to kind of a funny but sad story. So my dad was doing laundry in the basement of our old house, and uh, he slipped, and he dislocated his hip. And uh, he said, once you dislocate it, you can't move. There's like, you try to move, and it's so painful. And in our laundry room, we didn't have a telephone anywhere uh, near him, and then he didn't have a cell phone. So he just did uh, the dryer. And it was done, so he took the warm clothes and put them all over himself to keep them warm. And then, thankfully, I was at school at the time, and my sister came home for lunch from college. And then, you know, you hear screaming in the basement, and my sister proceeds to bring him to the hospital. And then I get a text later that says, bring Crocs and dad's shorts. So we got through all that. And then that's kind of the moment where uh, things started going downhill for my dad. Um, he has made a big impact on my life. Uh, like I said, I get my talk it, talkativeness and my being so hyper from him and just being friendly. Uh, so like I said, he had one surgery and that one surgery turned into getting both of his legs done and both of his arms done and one of his legs done five times and the other three and one of his arms two. So he's had a lot of replacements and if you ever research these titanium, they're the ball and socket joints that you have in your hips and your shoulders. Uh, it was a metal on metal grinding. So when it does that, it actually was poisoning him from the inside because the titanium was rubbing against itself and then it was getting into his bloodstream and he had to get that removed and then it's just been a whole downhill story. And I think sophomore year is when it really kind of impacted me the most is you start seeing changes, uh, mood swings, not, not necessarily mood swings, but he's not the same. I guess you would say uh, he would not have enough energy, he would be kind of irritable and just not himself. So that's kind of... Uh, I don't know. It was very hard on my family, but I guess, uh, I don't know. We just kind of got through it. And then junior year happened and, uh, life kept changing as itself. But then we got a letter from the doctor junior year that says he has five years to live. And, uh, you know, I never really trusted those things when I was younger because I had a cousin that was like, oh, he has, you know, 20 years to live. And then he dies two years later. And you have people that are like, oh, it's only three months and they live the rest of their life healthy. So I never really took it into consideration. I never really actually took it to heart. And so that was a year ago. And junior year also, I shared my testimony and then that's kind of where I cut it off at was don't take things for granted, which I didn't think was the best thing to do. But now that's my senior year, I have a little more to add on to it that can go back to the verse. So during choir tour, we were at a church in Jersey, I want to say, somewhere in there. And I get a call from my dad in the middle of a, we were rehearsing before the concert that night. So I get a call from him and I was thinking, oh, it's just a, you know, he wants to talk a little bit. So me being smart, I go to the front, there was a sanctuary and then there, there was these two doors that open up that lead right to where we were all standing and there was a chair there. So I sat in the chair and my dad called, uh, he was crying and I was just wondering what was going on. And he said my aunt had killed herself. And, you know, she wasn't, I don't want to say she wasn't close because she was, but she was very distant. She was into drinking and she got away from the family. So it was kind of a shocker to really just hear that uh, she killed herself. So I didn't know exactly uh, how to take it. I was wondering, you know, you have all the questions. What was the last thing you said to her? What was, um, did she love Jesus? Did she love Christ? And all this other stuff. And uh, I plagued myself with that over and over again. And then I got through choir tour. And then over the summer, uh, he's not my grandpa. He's my dad's uh, stepdad, but we call him my grandpa because I've known him since I was what born, pretty much. And uh, yeah, uh, he also died, and that put such a strain on my family. And I didn't, I didn't take it as hard as I did, or I thought I would. I guess I should say. Uh, I just kind of went on with life, and I don't know. I should have really just gotten down to it. He was somebody that I really looked up to. Uh, we had all of our fishing times. He taught me how to bite a worm in half, which I don't do today. But uh, he taught me how to fish and how to, you know, just care for others. And um, I don't know. It's put a strain on my grandma. It's put a strain on my family to lose your daughter and your husband within two months of each other. And then that leads me to my senior year. And my senior year so far has been great. And 
it's been so awesome just to be at the school for six years now and just talk to everybody again. You know, I've been with, you know, like Daniel and Thomas and Tommy and Reggie for like six years now. And we have made this brotherhood, this almost family in our senior class. And, you know, through all these hard times, I've always uh, had my doubts and I've always doubted things and thought maybe this isn't, you know, the right thing to be doing. Maybe I, I, it's not, you know, why would God do this to my family and me? But you, you can't really say that. You have to look past that and say, you know, I think personally, this is just me, but I think death uh, can bring you closer as, as a family and it can bring you together. It breaks you down. So then the people that love you and people you love can come around you and comfort you. And in that grief, you can see God's love and God's mercy that he has on people. So like I said before, my senior verse, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who believe in him. I just want to say to all you guys, uh, senior year has been great. You guys have made it awesome. Uh, let's finish it out strong. Everybody gets that like last two months. Oh, I don't know anybody. I need to you know, talk to the Norwegians and they leave in two months. And I would say branch out. And if you are having these struggles, you know, tell somebody, stay in the word. You know, God is always there for you. He's not going to leave you or forsake you. And I just wanted to thank you guys for letting me share my testimony, I guess.